What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Sailor Turn Gamer, and we are back in the building coming at you with another Anthem video. With update 1.0.4 expected to release pretty soon, it's time we talk about the state of Anthem. What's Anthem like today, and how could progression evolve tomorrow? Of course, to talk about progression, we're going to have to talk about where it is today, meaning we're going to have to talk about the obvious shortcomings and flaws in the game. I'm going to highlight some of those things. If you guys have other things that you want to take note of, be sure to put that in the comment section below. And once I get to the point where we're talking about some possible progression that I would like to see in the game, if you guys have some ideas on ways you can improve the game or things that you would like to see in the game to improve it put that in the comment section below as well i want to continue to build that narrative of dialogue and improvement as well as i want players that love this game to be able to come to this channel and become informed and become educated and know that there is more to the game than just the flaws that you hear about anyway be sure to stay here so you can, again, remain officially updated on the latest in Anthem. You guys know the deal. Patch notes, news and updates, community Q&A roundups, educational videos. We got it all. Stay here for all things Anthem. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a like and a share. And join the fleet by hitting that sub button. Now let's get into the talk. First, we got to talk about what we know. It took six years to make this game. And what has been out since its release? Well, you got Destiny 1, Destiny 2, and Division. Those are some of the most popular looter shooters in this modern era, and I can't see any noticeable step up in any capacity from those titles. In fact, I think you can argue that this first month of the game is probably the worst month of a looter shooter in the history of looter shooters. Or, it's at least the worst in all three of those titles. So, let's talk about the world. Free play is gorgeous. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Every aspect of free play looks amazing. But the problem is, it's empty, it's lame, it's just hollow, there's no life. I've talked about this several times before along with possible solutions. You can check out any of my previous videos for that to get a large angle on the things that I would like to see in the game. Contracts, way too easy. I mean, they're just meh. It feels like you should be able to pick them up and complete them within the landscape of free play, and you can't, and that in itself is a crime. Contracts are basically, you kill an enemy, defend a point, collect your items. Rinse and repeat. There's no variation. And if it is, it's little. I mean, I don't really have a problem with this. If you could accept contracts while being out on free play to give you more to do. Expand free play. There's so much that you could do with that. Look, speaking of free play, we're going to go on and talk about the dungeons that exist. Here. And you can go in those dungeons, and it's a good way to change things up. But most of the time, as far as I know, there's no dungeon bosses or chests that you can find filled with loot after you completely finish a dungeon. So it's like, yeah, what's the point? It's kind of a wasted space. Strongholds might be the saving grace of the game, but sadly the loot table is way too big right now. And a lot of the loot is kind of undesirable. Not to mention, there's no outlaw specific stronghold in place of making in the like time frame of making this video. There's no outlaw specific stronghold, which is kind of a shame. And the reason why I bring up there's no outlaw specific stronghold right now is because there literally are challenges in the game that require you to kill a certain amount of outlaws. Which I know outlaws you can go into free play, but you can find the other races in strongholds, and yet. You can't find outlaws. That's a problem. Anyway, let's move on. The guns look the same. And that really wouldn't be a problem if we knew guns were secondary to abilities. But if that's the case, there's not enough abilities per class and to justify that being a thing. At least in my opinion. Right now, Anthem's biggest issue is keeping its audience. The game's been out for a month. And I'm just like, there's a part of me that's just scared that all the players are going to just go away. I mean... I already know and I already feel like a lot of the players just got bored with the daily rotation. I mean, the basic progression or pathways that we have right now is a bunch of repetition. You got your contracts, your legendary contracts, your strongholds, and free play. There's only so many times you can do the same contracts and have to go back to Fort Tarsus before you get tired of it. 
There's only three strongholds, and like I mentioned, there's no outlaw stronghold, so that's kind of coming up short. Free play is free play, but there's a lot of things they got to add to it, so it's kind of like, meh. With the addition of Elise and Cash is coming soon, that could be something to be in the game to spice it up a little bit, but it still makes me worry because it's an addition to something that doesn't truly add progression. And so it's kind of still an issue. Uh, the incentive to grind these activities really falls short quickly. And well, in GM1, you basically need legendaries with a pretty good role in order to come through and do those things successfully and transition to GM3, which is pretty difficult right now without having proper legendaries, which I know there's a lot of players in the player base that suffer from that. But hey, you're all caught up. That's the state of the game right now, in my opinion. Let's talk about how we can shape Anthem into something that's better, something that's different, something that's new. Like we already talked about, Anthem lacks any sort of meaningful progression system at the moment. The crafting sim uh, system, for example, let's talk about that. It desperately needs a change. It really needs a change. Where is the ember economy? So we have a variety of embers and if you are in quote-unquote endgame, there's so many embers that you can't use. You're not using rares. You're not using epics. What are those embers for? Somebody let me know because maybe I'm missing the point. My question is, why can't we use embers of one quality and upgrade them to embers of a different quality? Rare embers should be able to be sacrificed in order to create epic embers. And those epic embers should be able to make masterwork embers which obviously you can use your masterwork embers to craft masterworks. Now, this is something that I think is pretty cool. While crafting masterworks, I think it would be really, really awesome if, let's say, you had like a 5% chance. If you're crafting your masterworks, you have like a 5% chance at getting a legendary version of that masterwork you're crafting. Now, that would be cool, and that would also give gaining embers a purpose. That would give the crafting system a purpose, and it would just create overall more meaning to the system in itself. Because not only are masterworks still something that we care about, but how awesome would that be to be able to craft a masterwork and boom, get a legendary out of that? That would be really, really cool. Not only would it be cool, it would also facilitate having harvest builds to get more materials to craft more often. Because even if you can't craft leg legendaries, you can craft your masterworks and try to get a legendary, which can hopefully be better for you. That, again, I, I, I think this is something that they should really consider. Let's move on. Our javelins are supposed to be an expression and extension of us. All of the cosmetic gear that's already in the game needs to be released into the marketplace. And the game. This stuff needs to be locked behind completing difficult activities and challenges. Me, personally, I'll be okay if they place everything that they have right now in the store. Even if they hike the prices all the way up for coin purchasing. I mean, hear me out. If they did that. But they made it really reasonable with real money to buy these things. Now, I'm not a fan of microtransactions, but if they made it really difficult to purchase with coins, you need to grind, let's say, a week or two weeks or something to buy this particular thing in the store. And then it was like five bucks in the, in the marketplace. Then the people that wanted to do that could do that. But I would only be OK with that if it was possible to earn these things in challenges that were added to the game. To give you purpose and progression and say, hey, if I complete this challenge, I'm going to get this really dope armor set or piece of the armor set. Now, I know they have something like that in the game already with a couple of vinyls, but the way these challenges are are just crazy. I mean, the champion of Tarsus is just ridiculous as well, and we're going to talk about that in another video. Uh, it's a whole other discussion. The point is, we need more armor and cosmetics. I mean, I want to bring the thunder when I enter the room. I want to look cool. And I want to earn my way to that by completing challenges. Right now, completing challenges only gives you a little bit of coin. And it's just like, meh. Why should I do this for a little bit of coin? It's really not worth it. Look, I've made numerous talks about luck and how I feel like it needs to go. But I completely understand if that's something that Bioware really doesn't want to do. Look, I have a video where I'm talking about a lot of things related to luck and a lot of solutions that they could actually do when it comes to luck. And here's an idea I want to talk about. Again, I've, I've mentioned this in the past, but Bioware can implement a system 
where they add a third column to the gear items stats that we can get and that third column could be labeled as passives so certain gear items that people really don't like to use anyway they could lay, categorize those in the passive section and that's where luck could go so you could have luck on your gear still as a passive but then it will make more room for those other primary and secondary stats to be something of more value this would also be an awesome way to introduce BioWare's version of the recalibration station. I've been playing a lot of Division. I've played in the past and with Division 2 out, I'm playing a lot of that now. And with that, having a recalibration station in Anthem could be a great way for the player to feel like, hey, if I just spend my coin on recalibrating this gear, I could be one step closer to a god roll on this particular piece of gear. And that only helps the player want to stay in the game longer. Right now, the whole buzz of getting the GM3 is to have this perfect build, get to that mountaintop. But then the question is, then what? Well, spoiler alert, it's more of the same. Maybe over the course of the next few months, Bioware can introduce two more world tiers, GM4 and GM5. And these world tiers could actually increase the level of difficulty. What do I mean by that? Smarter AI, better movements, and unpredictable attack patterns. There's a lot of things that could really do with that. Maybe even mission modifiers that make certain enemies do things like, I don't know, freeze you or or shock you with every third bullet or, I don't know. There's, you get what I'm saying? There's a lot of things that they could do with that. And that would also bring credence to having those passives on your gear. You could begin to recalibrate your passives and say, oh, I want to build more more shock resistance on, on this, on this, on the set. And it'll help you. It would be cool adding a recalibration station. Think about it. In order for Anthem to succeed, there is more to the game that needs work. There's a whole lot more than just loot. We need a real progression system, and that right now does not exist. These are some of my ideas, and I have more on the way, but for now, if we can get any one of these ideas, that would be awesome. Anthem is lacking a lot of things, but the gameplay is just fun. But sadly, there's only so long that could last. But these are my thoughts. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Anyone that's made it this far in the video, I just want to say thank you. And be sure to stay here for all things Anthem. Again, guys, be sure to give this video a like and a share. And get these videos out. These less talks are ways that I try to educate the players and educate the community and get people to continue creating this dialogue that hopefully Bioware can hear one of these conversations and think about ways to improve the game. Those of us that watch these videos about Anthem, those of us that play Anthem, we love the game and we just want to see it better. And give it a like, share, subscribe, join the join the fleet. It's an easy way to support what us do and help us grow. Until then, this will be out in the open ocean. Peace.